Have you ever wondered why most TVs and monitors were that boxy, almost square shape until recently? Well, back in the 1890s, Thomas Edison and his assistant, William Kennedy Dixon, introduced a device for viewing films called the Kinetoscope. This device displayed an image 35 millimeters wide, Yep, just like film. Introducing the 4x3 aspect ratio. But what is an aspect ratio? Well, simply put, an aspect ratio is the ratio of the width to the height of the image being displayed. So this same 4x3 ratio was adopted by many movie and TV producers, making it the standard for decades. Because that's how it often goes in the film industry. Once you've adopted a standard, thanks to the cost, oh my goodness, the cost of the equipment, it's really hard to run around changing it all the time. And so it wasn't until the early 1950s that widescreen was conceived. And this is kind of funny. Originally widescreen, despite having, you know, obvious benefits, was used as kind of like a marketing gimmick by the movie studios. Why watch movies on your 4x3 TV at home when you could watch a widescreen movie at your local theater, not to mention paying more for it and buying a bag of popcorn while you're at it. So widescreen ratios became widespread starting in 1953 with a system called the Cinerama that used three projectors on a curved screen. Now, unfortunately, this proved to be too expensive, leading to the development of single projector widescreen, as well as movies produced for flat screens, which is kind of funny because curved displays are now starting to make a comeback. It's like technology is almost the same as fashion at a certain point. <sighs> at first, widescreen films were actually made by removing the top and bottom edges to create a 15 by nine aspect ratio, very close to what is seen in most displays today. But later, 20th Century Fox collaborated with French professor Henri Chrétien, who helped to create a special anamorphic lens that squished a widescreen image onto regular film. So when played back through a second anamorphic lens, the resulting image had an aspect ratio of 2.35 to 1, almost identical to the modern 21 by 9-ish filming standard. Nowadays, TVs very commonly use the 16 by 9 aspect ratio we've come to know and love, adopted because it could display videos recorded in other common aspect ratios without a ton of cropping or distortion. So not surprisingly, this format was chosen for broadcast HDTV, but the story doesn't stop there. 16x9 is also the most popular gaming resolution and is used with popular streaming websites like YouTube, Vessel, Hulu, Netflix, and countless others. Not watching in 1080p? That's fine because 16x9 was also chosen because it downscales easily to other resolutions. But even with the ubiquity of 16x9, many people still prefer even wider aspect ratios because they give you a more immersive experience thanks to the fact that they fill up more of your visual field. Flying through space in No Man's Sky, driving off-road in Dirt 3, or just playing Minecraft in a 21x9 ultra-wide aspect ratio can be deeply engaging. So, Due to this, more and more games are starting to support 21x9 natively and we're seeing 21x9 monitors become more common in the marketplace. So where does this leave us for the future? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if the market for ultra-wide content and hardware continues to grow, not just because of its immersiveness, but also because of its benefits to content creators, uh, productivity-minded people, and the manufacturers of displays who desperately need something new to sell you. <laughs> and there's also little doubt that we'll start to see new aspect ratio standards start to pop up thanks to the rise of VR. The Oculus Rift, for example, uses a 16 by 10 aspect ratio to fill the wearer's field of view as much as possible. I mean, hell, maybe we'll just make our own special Linus Media Group aspect ratio for optimal loop viewing. After all, viewer satisfaction is what we're all about. Speaking of satisfaction, have you ever wanted to learn something? Have you ever felt that satisfied feeling of learning something? Well, it's quite possible you're already a member, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. Lynda.com. With a Lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts who are passionate about teaching. They've got thousands of video courses that you can either stream on your computer or you can download to your phone and watch them later or your other portable device like a tablet. It allows you to browse course transcripts, to follow along, or search for 
an answer and skip to that point in the video. It allows you to create playlists that you can share with your friends so you guys can all do like a, a learning path together. It's got all kinds of like great, fantastic features. And the best thing about it, actually there's a couple best things about it. I have two best things about it. Best thing number one is that you will get a free 10 day trial. All you have to do is check out the link in the video description. And best thing number two is that it all starts at a flat rate of just 25 bucks a month. If you try it out and you're like, oh yeah, this is really cool. I'm like learning programming or like I'm taking my photography to the next level or video editing or whatever else the case may be. Yes, my friends, links in the video description and that's all. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the other button the subscribe button. Yeah, if you disliked it, get subscribed so that we have another chance to have you like a different video. Speaking of different videos, leave a comment below this one if you have suggestions for other videos you'd like to see us make. And as always, subscribe and follow and all that good stuff, whether you liked or disliked it. Just get subscribed. You never know when we might make something decent for a change.